I think one of the temptations with the, with the way that you've described holy moments is to believe that you have to be aware of that process in order for it to be a holy moment. Like in order to have a holy moment, I need to be like, okay, God, wait, hold on. I got to put my self-interest aside for a hot second here. And I'm like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? All right, I'm going to go do it. But uh, in, in, in the book, um, there's an amazing example that you give uh, of your son, Walter, who has a beautiful holy moment, but he's also not consciously aware that he's having one. So what is the relationship between awareness and holy, and holy moments? Yeah, so we're driving home one day and um, we come past the donut shop and, um, and Walter says, you know, should we, should we stop and get some donuts? Um, for Ralphie, Ralphie loves donuts. Um, Walter doesn't eat donuts, you know, and, um, and we did. Um, and when we got home, it turned out Ralphie had had a rough day. And, and it just really, it was, it was a very touching thing to see Walter bring these donuts in, into Ralph and, um, and then to learn about his day and, and, and it was just clear the spirit was at work, you know. Um, later that night, uh, Walter came into my office and, um, and I was working on the book. And, um, and he said, Dad, what, what are you working on? You know, because um, one of the things I've had to teach my children is that I do a lot of things in my office at home. You know, um, I do business work, I, I pay the bills, I read, I, I write. There's a lot of things I do in there. I don't want them to grow up thinking, daddy works all the time, you know? Um, there's a lot of things I do in there that are not work um, and that are important parts of my life. Um, anyway, he came in, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a new book. And he asked me what it's about and I explained, it's about holy moments and, and I said to him, did you have any holy moments today? And he's a very thoughtful little guy. You know, he's 12 and um, sits there for a moment. And he said, I, I don't think so. And I said, well, I think you had a holy moment on, on the way home, you know, when, when we stopped to get the donuts, you know, that, that was your idea. And I think the spirit was stirring in you. You don't eat donuts. It's something you wanted to do for your little brother. and um, and then when we got home, clearly Ralphie had had a day and, and you could see that God was working through you to, uh, to soothe, uh, to care for, for Ralph, you know, and, um, and it's just a small thing, but, but that was a holy moment. And so to circle back to your question, um, Walter was not doing that intentionally. He wasn't saying, I am going to create a holy moment. Um, I think the danger is to think that we have to teach Walter to do it intentionally. Mm. Um, I think we actually have to return to where Walter is, where it happens naturally, spontaneously, creatively. Mm. The spirit is alive and well, thriving in in all of those things um but we worship uh, our intellects and so we think that if we intentionally do something that it has more value um but of course that that also is a form of self-worship because ultimately it is god that is creating the holy moments he's collaborating with us to create mm -hmm. these holy moments um should people set out to intentionally create holy moments yes but only because, like virtue, over time, by doing that, it will become natural and spontaneous and creative um, and, and will not require the same level of intentionality that it, that it requires early on in the beginning. That's a totally different way to look at what Jesus said when he invited us to be like little children, right? Like, that's just little children 
have that natural propensity to collaborate and cooperate with the spirit. Uh, so that's and to listen to their hearts and to follow their hearts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing.